All right, everybody. So we are beginning right now. We are in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, and we have a beautiful canvas to work with. I absolutely love it. So most of the waterfalls that we built last year or in 2020, they were all on super steep inclines or declines, depends on where you're standing. And that makes for very dramatic waterfalls. But me personally, I like the slow moving waterfalls. I like when you've got 25 feet to work with going down, you got a 25 foot run and you only have just a few feet of drop because that gives you a lot of room for you to actually do meandering, nice wide streams, huge plant shelves, bunch of spots like that so the birds can come in and hang out. You got some slow moving water and that is what we have here. So let's go take a look. I'm walking down for the first time to actually lay my good eye on what is going on down here. nothing wrong with what is going on in this picture but they have been following us on our YouTube and Facebook channel watching the projects we'd be, we'd be putting together <laughs> that we've been putting together and they have fallen in love with our signature style because it represents more of a natural look than what we have here so that being said we need to find some rocks because no one can get in the mountains right now because it's been raining for like 300 days straight and everything's muddy. They can't get the rocks, they can't get machines up the hills. We can't get machines up the hills. So it's gonna be interesting seeing this come together. We should have our video done by 2026 and probably this project. So that being said, we're gonna get rolling. You guys stay tuned. Go. The whole bed of the stream is murdered together. So what would usually be an easy rock to pull out is now impossible. And we don't have a sledgehammer. So that being said, wrap it up, we're out. What you guys doing down there? Playing with frogs. This whole time, we thought this thing was the perfect habitat for so many frogs and we were so disappointed because not only have we torn apart almost the entire stream, we got the whole edges torn apart, but we were almost all the way done with this lower pool, but we just found our very first frog. Oh, my. <laughs> I should call him number two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We've got this whole reservoir torn out and this was completely unforeseen. So that is why we have an unforeseen clause in our contract is because you never know what you're getting into. We had a waterfall right about where you guys are sitting in this video. A little one coming down towards me and then most of the cascades were coming off from the back. And it looked like this reservoir was maybe a four by six right in this area. And it actually turned out to be probably 14 by six, at least across. So not only is this way bigger than our reservoir needs to be, now that I'm looking at it with these giant trees off to both sides, less than two feet away from this actual reservoir, the chances are pretty good that when we start digging in this thing, we are gonna hit some crazy roots. And we love the trees, the homeowners love the trees, and the last thing we wanna do is have this big reservoir and beautiful waterfall with a bunch of dead trees around it. So we're gonna see what we find when we start digging. Because if we do start digging and we find the main feeders for these guys, 
we are not going to take a chance on killing them and we might have to have a different conversation about this reservoir. We're going to have a waterfall coming down right where it was supposed to in the beginning, but instead of using large aqua blocks that are roughly 17 inches tall, we're going to use smalls that are nine and a half inches tall so that we don't have to dig nearly as deep. The downside of that is we're going to have to make this reservoir footprint twice as large because you're getting half the block that's half as tall. So instead of doing 12 large, we're doing 24 small aqua blocks, which is a massive footprint. And when you're doing a 25 foot long waterfall, you really don't want to have a 15 foot by six foot area of just river stones, dry river stones when you get done. So how you would have to disguise that is we would come in with a bib liner, where it's actually just a scrap piece of liner going over top of our aqua blocks to continue this stream all the way from back there where the water falls, more than halfway across here to where when we get done, it looks like there is still only this little four by six area where there is no standing water. And that is the visual effect we're looking for. None of that dry stack. So we're gonna see what we find. We're gonna get digging and we'll be back. have this crazy looking pile of liner and geotextile with rocks and buckets and stuff on top of it. So um, this is how we used to do our reservoir installations. You would actually lay everything out, get it cut in, dry fit your blocks in your pondless vault hole to make sure everything fits good. And then you would put everything in there, your geo, your liner down, put all your media in and then wrap it up like what you see before you now. So this is definitely the longer way to do this because now what we have to do is go around each side evenly, place dirt as we go across both sides to make sure the blocks don't get offset because there's nothing to hold them in place yet. And then you have to tamp it like three, four inches at a time because that's all that it'll actually sink and you don't want settling later. So the reason that we had to do this is because with the amount of roots, even though we never hit the main feeders that I had talked about earlier coming from these trees so it wasn't a hassle, there is a lot of cut roots and just sharp edges of stuff sticking out on these walls. So instead of doing what we normally do, laying all the blocks out and doing gravel around the outside, we had to fold this thing up like a burrito to get it that way and now we're going to spend a lot of time backfilling it to make sure we don't get any pinholes in our liner. Because if you get a pinhole in your liner and the bottom of your reservoir, it's going to be a very, 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 very expensive fix later. You're going to have to tear the whole thing out and we don't like doing stuff twice. So that's pretty much where we're at right now. I'm going to quit yapping and get the backfilling. most important aspect of this because if you get this reservoir in and you don't get the rock on top and get it full of water what happens is this waterproof liner acts like a boat which I've probably said in many videos before because it really really stinks when this thing floats up and you have to reset all progress the first day you come back so we are going to do some clean outs in the rain for the next couple days and hopefully we will get some dry weather coming up here in the next week. But for that, that's all we've got. We're safe for now. We're gonna unroll this liner and get out of Dodge. Later. We have a beautiful morning today. We are finally able to come back here. We've been in hiatus for almost a week now. We've been five days gone, off doing clean outs in the wonderful weather we've had in the meantime, but we did a pretty good job of protecting our job site. So we had tarps running down our runways. We had the liner all sprawled out up the stream so we could keep this stuff dry and actually workable. Plus 24 hours of sunshine yesterday got us to a workable point where we can actually get our stuff back here. So now we are actually finally able to set some boulders. So the problem with this is we are cut off by access right off the bat no fault of our own. We can't get our stuff at the bottom, so we can't actually reach over the wall and set the rocks in the reservoir. So what we have to do is roll up this stuff like a giant pile of liner 
behind me that you see going on. And we have to crawl in here with our machine and set our way out of the reservoir. As soon as we get that stuff down, we can actually start our excavation for our stream, get that done, and unroll some of this liner to start our stream work. So for now, we got some plumbing and we're gonna get to rocking. Let's talk. Well, that's it guys the end of part one of this killer waterfall project i'm telling you i got a little carrot to dangle out there for you because i saw the after footage of this job yesterday tristan went back out to the job site a couple days ago and shot the most incredible after footage to match the before footage he shot nighttime shots you're going to get to see it all in the next episode stay tuned follow the team on facebook at modern design aquascaping like comment subscribe to the youtube channel we appreciate you thanks for following modern design Thanks for following the Adams family. John G. Out.